Black Balloon, that was uh, sort of about a friend who got sort of caught up in a lot of um, uh, drugs and trouble, and it was it was really sad because she was a really amazing, beautiful person, and uh, you know, it was just sad to see somebody kind of you know she, she's fine, she's doing great, I suppose, and now, and uh, you know, but it was it was um, it was a pretty heavy song. Like I, I was I was pretty shocked when I wrote it. I was I was just sort of like because I didn't want to I didn't want to come straight out with anything you know like I wanted to sort of infer things in the writing of the song um, you know sometimes the songs uh, are very inside and the people who you write them for know that it's for them you know and uh, and that was very much one of those songs but somehow it was very relatable to a lot of people and um, and that's good. That's a good thing, you know. When when there's something very kind of personal about something, and then you know everybody can relate to it. You know, the thing about we it was I remember it was very very late at night, and we were we we had been there a long time, and you know, we were just messing around with instruments and all these all this different kind of stuff, trying to come up with something interesting, unique about it, because it's really. You know, the, the body of the song is really just two chords, back and forth, back and forth. And um, so we were looking for things, and I, and I was, at the time, I was kind of trying to experiment with, and once again, nobody cares how you get things done. <laughs> nobody cares about this. But, you know, I was experimenting with trying to, like, shove minor key parts in with major key stuff, like put them together in a weird way so that even though they might technically be dissonant, that they created a kind of a, a, a nice atmosphere. So I was messing around with that and I got uh, a baritone guitar and I detuned it um, and I just played harmonics and that's, and then, then we ran it through a bunch of pedals and outboard gear and just kept playing with it and messing with it and layering it up. and. Uh, you know, that's that's the, the introduction of the song, which sort of became a signature part of the song. Um, that's how that came about. That's always a really big one, because because it comes to this very sort of grand thing. We, that was, you know, we had just started experimenting with strings, too, and, and that was Rob Cavallo got us into strings, um, which was sort of a corner that the band turned, you know, and it was like, we ain't going back now. We're not going back to the 930 Club playing punk rock songs. And uh, it had this crescendo in the bridge at the very end where this beautiful piano and this string section all come together and they just, they just create this thing and then it just drops out. The bottom just drops out of it. And to me, that was very sort of symbolic about what the song was about in the first place. It was sort of kind of you know, a musical analogy of what this person was going through because it just rises so high and then the bottom drops out. Boom. And then you start the, tr the long trip back to being yourself, you know, to the end of the song. I'll become what you became to me. And that's where it just sort of ends where it began. And let's go back to our, our wacky but nice friend, Nancy Bardowell. She, this is where I think Nancy started to hate me because she got a welder to <laughs> and a crane and she, she had them weld a spring and a harness to the top of a cherry picker, right? And I was there. And I was over a swimming pool about 20 feet in the air wobbling back and forth like a bobblehead <laughs> over this pool full of these gorgeous girls just swimming back and forth. I mean, the video was, the video was stunning. It was yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and there's like job. just these, just visually the way this girl, this girl with these gorgeous red lips and just, and she's smoking a cigarette and it's just so beautiful how it was shot. And, and you know, once again, Nancy was just fantastic. Yeah. She, she with, I think part of the reason that that record propelled up and became so big was because of her, her, her images were so powerful that you know, everybody wanted to watch those videos. I mean, the images that came with the song were like, 
almost as important yeah. in a weird sort of way back then because you really needed the support of MTV and VH1, and and VH1, and if it wasn't interesting, they they weren't gonna they weren't gonna touch it, which is odd when you watch it now and none of it really seems all that interesting. I mean, not our stuff in particular. I just mean in general, you know, when you watch. But I think, um, you know, I do think that that uh, you know, like I said, it was so important back then, and she didn't, and, and we had a great. Uh, the situation with her. It was yeah, awesome. The, yeah. Like her production company and everybody. Yeah. And everybody was just like awesome. 